Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today I'm going to tell you how to get those armies that are gray painted. Let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get into the technique and learn it Vinci V style. If you're anything like most hobbyists, myself included, you've got a lot of unpainted figures. You've got armies you want to paint, you dream of painting, but you haven't painted yet. Now, I've painted a lot of armies in my time. By my count, I've done about 20 armies. And all in all, I'm proud of all of these armies I've put together. Some of them are very speed painted. They were put together fast and furious over a weekend or a week. Some of them were months and months and months of work. Labors of absolute love uh, that I'm still proud of to this day and that won you know, awards in various tournaments and things they went to. But regardless of how fast I painted them, there was a series of things that I did with all of them that allowed me to get from the beginning of the project to the end of the project. And today, I want to take you through my three tips for getting your armies painted. Now, we're not going to talk about the specific painting. This isn't about a technique. I'm not going to show you how to slap, chop, or layer, or anything like that. Instead, this one is a little more ephemeral. This is about sort of the metaphysical, the, the higher techniques, tricks, and tips that I'll share with you that actually matter a lot in getting from the beginning of the project to the end of the project. So, let's talk about those three tips. Tip number one, keep your palette simple. Now, this might sound, I don't know, strange or maybe unimportant, but I actually think it's really, really important. I think where a lot of people go wrong is they, tr is they blow their palette up. They use tons and tons of paints. And that doesn't sound like it would be an issue, but it often is. Because you're constantly switching paints, you need to do a bunch of different things, it slows the process down. If you're using a green, you don't need a lighter green. If you're using a blue, you don't need a lighter blue. You need one highlight color, or two maybe, maybe a warm one and a cold one or something like that. But if you've got a light tone you're using for your flesh, any kind of light flesh tone, highlight your green with that. Highlight your blue, your purples, your browns, everything with that. Use the same tones across your highlights and your shadows, and it just makes painting a lot easier. You're working from a simplified palette, you're constantly just starting from a, from a mid-tone, working up, working down, whatever you're doing, it makes your life a lot easier. I should state that if you're doing something like working with speed paints, but then going back in and maybe cleaning up a couple details or something like that, this is also a great technique. Don't try to go in and exactly match the color or figure something out. No, just take the speed paint or the contrast or whatever you're doing, mix it with a little bit of that same light universal tone you've used around the miniature, and it makes your life a lot easier. Next up, keep your composition simple. Now, this is all related to the simple palette. A simple palette means a simple composition. Don't go crazy. When it comes to your composition, find whatever the major elements of your, of your figure are. If you're doing a Space Marine army, it's the armor. If you're doing, you know, Cities of Sigmar, it's the armor. It's, it's usually the armor. Uh, but the point is, is that you find whatever those major elements are, and those are what you're going to invest all your, you know, any of your time into. The rest, keep it simple. Belts, boots, bags, buckles, those kinds of things, you just, those are, those are ready to be speed painted, dry brushed, anything like that. Just whatever quick, fast technique you can, or to have the simplest composition to them. One tone and then some scratchy highlights or texture or something like that. Invest your time wisely in your composition. Find the face, the base, the shield, the weapon, whatever the major element is, that's where you focus your attention. The little bojangles and dangles, those don't matter, all right? In the end, wasting time on a lot of those little tiny elements will end up slowing you down, distracting you, and ultimately sapping your motivation to keep going. Tip number two, find your workflow. Throughout my army painting videos, you'll see me use many different workflows. As I'm working on my Skaven right now, I am actually painting one rat at a time. Now, that might be a completely insane workflow to you, but that's often how I do my armies now. I just don't like bulk painting or batch painting models at all. 
and that's fine. I paint one at a time, and I work my way through. It's just a hammer and a nail. You keep it up long enough, you'll lay the Transcontinental Railroad. You've just got to be willing to swing that hammer. But for you, it might be batch painting five figs at a time, or ten figs, or a whole unit of twenty, or anything like that, right? It might be priming your whole army and doing one major color across it. Again, if you're doing Space Marines, maybe you're using your airbrush to lay down the armor tone across all of your Marines at once. And then you work unit to unit on, you know, the details, the edges of the armor, the belts, the boots, the guns, and those kinds of things. That's fine. There's no one magic workflow, okay? There just isn't. What you should be doing is trying to experiment and find the one that works for you. Not just uh, for that particular army, although that matters. You know, how unified, how singular of, an ele of the elements are those. Tyranids are more easy to do from like an airbrushy kind of work across the whole army all at once. Just like Seraphon in, in Age of Sigmar. Because they tend to have a lot of figures that are composed of the same element. It's like soft flesh and scales. Just like you know, both those armies the same, right? Whereas something like Cities of Sigmar, that might not be as possible because you just don't have as many unified elements. So you need to work more individually, a unit at a time, right? So find the workflow that's going to work for that army, but that also works for you psychologically. And make sure that, that you uh, align those two things together so that you don't get burnout. Now, Right aligned with this is having a scheme that you can repeat. This is an extension of what I said before with keeping your composition simple. Find that scheme that you can actually repeat. When you do your test model, make sure it's not so overtly complicated that it ends up tripping you up later. Right? And what I would recommend is reward yourself. No matter your workflow, reward yourself. How? With figs from the army you're painting. So if you've just finished a big unit, pull out a single, you know, normal human-sized character, or if that such thing exists, right? Or whatever, whatever a singular hero or character model is in your army that's, that's not a giant monster. And paint it. And feel the sense of accomplishment of that. One, it, it's probably a little bit more complicated of a figure. But two, it's a chance for you to flex. I often do this with Claw Lords in my Skaven army. They're a chance for me to flex, to, to have fun, and when I'm done, it's one fig. And yet, it's like an actual significant part of the army done. So it just feels great in every way. Break up your process with by rewarding yourself with those characters, those models, and save the things that excite you most for the last. If you're super jazzed to paint one fig in that army, do not paint it first. Otherwise, you will not paint the rest. Save it. Make it the end of the race, not the beginning. Tip number three is going to sound strange, but it's probably the most important one. And that is challenge yourself. I know I said keep it simple. I know I said all those things. But you have to still challenge yourself in some way. And that's why everyone finds this so tricky. Because ultimately, you are trying to walk a fine line. If you're bored you will stop painting, period. Like, you just won't do something you don't want. You'll find excuses. You'll do other things. If you aren't interested, being pushed, learning, challenging, growing, as you're working on the army, you won't keep working on the army. Usually the way I recommend here is find some individual thing that you can push yourself on. Maybe everybody in the army is going to have cool non-metallic swords or plasma swords or, or magic swords or energy swords. I don't freaking know. Something like that, right? Great. That's a thing to work on. It's one part of the fig. It's a cool part of the fig. It's a noticeable part of the fig. So the time is well invested. And yet you can push yourself. You, if you work on energy swords or plasma swords or something like that for a whole army, when you're done, you will be amazed at how much you level up that skill. You'll push yourself on something that's a challenge, and yet you'll also be growing. And at the end, you have a brand new tool in the toolbox that you can bring to anything you do in the future. So maybe it's the skin and the sort of toning and shading and complexity of the skin. 
Maybe it's you want to work on some texture on some things, right? So you're going to start texturing out leather and belts and stuff like that, or, or have some textured silk cloths or wool robes or, you know, I don't know, cloaks or whatever. Sure, fine. Any of those things are fine. Don't pick all of them. All of them is too much, and then we're breaking the simple rule. We do not want to pick all of them. We pick one, maybe two things. And in challenging ourselves in that way, of pushing ourselves with that interesting thing that is that we have to kind of still work on and resolve and understand each time we get to a fig, it keeps our brains active and engaged in the process. It keeps us learning, and that will keep you coming back for more. Again, the key is to make it so it's not something so crazy, it's impossible. Don't put yourself into the fear zone here where it's like, I'm going to try the most complicated lighting scheme in history when I've never done any kind of complicated lighting before. No, you will not succeed. You will fail and stop painting, okay? Don't do that. Pick something that's reasonable, achievable, but challenging. And there's lots of things to learn. You can probably think of something that you've wanted to try find that opportunity. Maybe it's weathering and streaking. Maybe it's, uh, again, tattoos, right, on if you've got uh, figures with a lot of open skin. Maybe it's a little bit of freehand on the figure, some designs. You've got some orcs and you want to do just a little bit of cool checks and dags and stuff like that, right? There's so many options. Find that thing that speaks to you and the army you're working on and do it. And because you keep pushing yourself you'll keep coming back to the army and continue painting, right? And once again, characters, those rewards, are a chance to really flex and work on this stuff. So maybe on your actual figures, most of the army, you keep it pretty simple. You know, you're going to work on some freehand, so, uh, or, or some tattoos or something. So the main characters, or sorry, the unit characters, you know, things you're painting 10, 20 of, they've just got some simple designs. Simple checks, simple dags, simple whatever here or there, right? fine. Then you get to a character and that's a chance to really expand. That's where you push yourself even farther. Take it to the next level. By doing that, you also reward yourself more because you've practiced. You've been working your way up on those individual models and now you're ready to rock and roll on the characters. Okay? So those little things will keep you painting. One more last little bonus tip. Paint the armies, the units, the models that you like. No, that you love, okay? Because in the end, lists will change, points will change, books will change, but a great figure that you love is yours for the rest of your life, okay? Points change, figures are forever. So find the stuff that really interests you, and if you think everything in it looks cool, if you're not painting it just to sort of because you think it's the good thing, if it's because there's a real passion there, you will just keep painting it. With that, I will say thank you so much. I hope these three tips were helpful for you in how you think about painting your own armies, especially as we're here at the beginning of 4th edition Age of Sigmar, and I know I'm deep in the heart of some army painting. If they were helpful, give them a like. Subscribe. We've got new videos here every Saturday. Next week, we'll be back to some more painting techniques. If you've got questions about anything or how I painted any of my armies, drop them down in the comments below. I always answer every question asked. If you want to support the channel, there's lots of ways you can do so. You can pick up one of Uncle Adam and I's books. Everything that we wrote is down there if you're looking for a cool new skirmish game to try. There's affiliate links to pick up your hobby supplies. Doesn't cost you anything extra. In fact, it often saves you money and gives the channel a little kickback. There's also, of course, our Patreon down there focused on taking your next step on your hobby journey. We'd love to have you as part of the community. As always, though, I thank you so much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time.